Welcome to the Joyful Mate Podcast. Join your joyful journey mentor, Anthony Harcher, as we explore the path to inner joy and fulfillment. Each episode, we'll dive into the science of happiness, share personal insights, and invite you to be part of this interactive book writing adventure. Let's embark on this joyful journey together. Tune in and let's make happiness a part of your every day. Me and my happiness recording number two just had a thought in terms of thinking about sporting people and in terms of what it's what the high that they experience when they pursue the summit and never get to the ultimate uh, version of their goal, um, which is the win. So, and, and again, this is attaching to the outcome. And so the problem with having a particular form or version of the outcome is that, as I said earlier in recording number one, is that it's reliance on things out of your control to align to what you ultimately want that form to manifest as. The only thing as a sportsman is you can only ultimately focus on your performance, what you do, and and improve yourself. And again, you need to, you know, even in the competition or the pursuit of that gold medal, that in that in that game or whatever the sport may be, is that you need to focus on you and not the opponents. Obviously, when we focus on the opponent, we we lose connection with ourselves and how we're playing, and we get fixated on how well they're playing um, or how well they're not playing, and that will alter how we play because we lose our state of presence. So it's, again, getting back to climbing this mountain is it's best to focus on what you can control and if everything aligns perfectly then that ultimate form of what you want to transpire will be fulfilled and you'll feel this abundant rush of all the hormones that are associated with fulfillment and accomplishments uh, so surges in dopamine serotonin oxytocin all these neurotransmitters are flooded and obviously when there's a huge rush of anything or a surplus of anything uh, we're going to experience a state of excess so a state of ecstasy or a state of euphoria and however with that comes the down the crash because eventually that will go away. Uh, those neurotransmitters will be broken down by the body and you'll feel the down. And so the greater the high, the greater the down. And so it can get quite addictive from a sporting point of view is that they do achieve these massive highs. But the downside of these massive highs is that they also experience um, a big fall off the other side um, of the cliff. And so... Um, as much as it's fulfilling to get that prize, then when they don't have the prize, it's harder for them to feel fulfilled, harder for them to be content, which can be a a good thing as well, because then that drives the desire and hunger for you to want it again. The problem is, you know, with sporting people is that they have a limited period of time at which they're at uh, peak physical ability. And so... What, how do they get that fulfillment post that peak physical uh, period of their life? And so that can be really difficult for sporting players to find um, or to go to come down to uh, what you probably call is more normality, um, more what the bulk of the population experience in terms of just momental small amounts of uh, surges of these neurotransmitters, but then you have less of a drop. And so it's probably an advantage of not having this massive success is that you don't have the massive lows because, you know, you even look at um, other sectors where people are extremely successful, such as in 
music, for example, entertainment, where again, it is still some limitation on the ability to, uh, you know, continually perform at that high level. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of, on, on, takes a big toll on the body. Um, and so, you know, they don't have a, a long lifespan either because there's a lot of travel, uh, physically exhausting and obviously, um, trying to keep the group together, you know, in a, in a sense of a band or, um, uh, is difficult, uh, because p people have their own hierarchy of values and they might have fulfilled a particular void. Um, now they no longer, um, value what they've fulfilled. So this, yeah, leads to rake up in bands and uh, they chase other things and pursue other things. Um, you often read about these successful people that have had these extreme highs that um, the only way they keep feeling that level of contentment because of the high is through drugs. Uh, so drugs give them these massive surge of neurotransmitters and chemicals that give them a similar buzz to what it's like when they're performing or when they're winning a goal at all, winning a match. And so it can be really uh, difficult for athletes that experience these massive highs to then um, find a life after their athletic career. And again, it's because of the attachment into the particular form of fulfillment and thinking that life should always be that way yeah. so they they create a fantasy uh of a one-sided life uh that it should always be high or should always be buzzing should always be exciting but that's not how life is life is completely balanced served and in order to experience what they love they need to have the opposite uh, the, the contrast to do otherwise you know if there's no contrast then what is a high um and in actual fact that's what makes life so special is the fact that we don't have this constant state of feeling massively happy is that we get to experience the lows and therefore we realize and appreciate the highs um but there's a a view on happiness that it should all be a one-sided, uh, it should always be a fantasy. Um, and life is a fantasy. Well, life doesn't work that way. Um, in order for life to exist, it needs both challenge and support. Uh, and so often people perceive a challenge as something as uh, difficult and struggle, but the reason why they feel um, accomplishment and a sense of happiness and fulfillment is because they've got through the challenge. But however, we, we face the challenge. We often think we see difficulty and we think, I don't really want this or I don't choose this or I don't feel like this. But that is what brings you to the other side. And that is what delivers contentment. That's what delivers that sense of fulfillment is that you've accomplished something. You've moved through what you perceive was insurmountable or so difficult. Um, and so you get this flood of accomplishment is, and that's why we've evolved as a human species is that we keep solving problems. We, every time we solve a problem, we get in the sense of accomplishment and we want to again, strive again and solve another problem. And, but the gap between solving the problems is a challenge is can sometimes feel as a, a bit of a struggle or a bit of a, a grind but if it's something and this is really important that the problem needs to be really aligned to what's important to you because it, if it isn't then you won't feel that sense of fulfillment when you accomplish it uh, so the only way you'll feel the fulfillment is that it if it's aligned to who you are and what you value so it's really important that we are pursuing a path of what's important to us because then the challenges will be more fulfilling. And the important aspect is, is knowing that 
uh, not getting fixated that the, ha the problem has to be solved in order to feel fulfilled is allowing the transformative state, the progress towards that ultimate goal is fulfilling and is drives satisfaction, drives contentment. However, if we just focus on that huge gap between where we are and what we, where we want to be in order to feel happy, then that's going to become too distressing. And eventually that can burn people out is because they just don't see it. Um, they don't see their progress. They're not aware because they're focused on the gap. Whereas if you're focused on the process and what you can control and on the transformative state that the goal's taking you on, the journey it's taking you on, and be conscious of the improvements you're making as a, as a um, improvements you're making towards your goal, then you'll be feeling more content, more satisfied, happier um, along the journey. And you may arrive at that state that you, you know, or that form that you wanted, that's possible. Um, and that's great. Uh, but you realize that the content, the fulfilling part was actually that journey to solving the problem or meeting that objective. Um, and you get there and then you're thinking, okay, I just want to go on this journey again and take myself to the next level. I'm, I'm in this constant state of looking for transformation and, and acknowledging and be consciously aware of my growth and development on this part towards what is fulfillment that like keeps you bu keeps your bucket full. And I think what can happen is that people focus on the gap and they see the glass half full. They because they're just focusing on the gap and not. Focusing on the process and noticing and being consciously aware of their progress, their little incremental progress towards that bigger objective. And the great thing about that path is that you're in a transformative state. As I said, everything's in, in a dynamic state. The, the whole environment around us in a constant state of uh, dynamic state. It's never still, never stands still the environment and same with our internal body it never stays still it's constantly um destroying dysfunctional cells or old cells creating new ones so our bodies on this journey of constant transformation the environments in this dynamic state of um stabilizing or you know conserving this build and destroy like you look at uh part of the natural cycle is um you know bushfires and the regeneration from bushfires uh, storms and then the the calm after the storm and the peace and extreme wind events and they could you know create cyclones and um, damage which creates a rebuild and um, a restorative state then there's you know no winds um, and so again that you know nature's in this dynamic state transformative state us personally uh, because we interact and we're part of nature is that we're on this constant our body's constantly adjusting to nature and the environment. So our body's in this transformative state. And so the best way to look at a uh, you know, satisfied life or contentment or ultimate happiness is recognizing the journey, uh, recognizing, uh, being consciously aware of that incremental progress you're making and then focusing on that incremental progress or bettering yourself and that's what you have control over because you have no control over the environment you have no control over other people you have no control over the government to really you know so we again depending on where we're at we can have some sort of influence but ultimately we can't control um how people respond what they say uh the decisions that are made um but w what we can control is our response um and we just what we want to do is constantly look at how can we can improve and that's acquiring knowledge. Uh, you need to be curious, open-minded and look at new ways in which you can evolve things. So one of the things I've been constantly evolving is my health and it's never an end state. Like, um, yes, I, I want to be healthy, but it requires constant work. And this brings me to a law of thermodynamics. Uh, this 
Well, the first law is what I've been covering in, I guess, the first um, number one and number two recordings is the law of conservation. So nothing is created or destroyed, but only transformed. So that's pretty much what I've been talking about is focusing, well, first of all, acknowledging, recognizing, being aware that everything's in a constant state of transformation, nothing's static. So therefore, happiness can't be static. It's constantly transforming. And in that, uh, the, the other thing is in that state of happiness, there's also a state of sadness. Uh, it's constantly, uh, these uh, polarities are entangled. And we just either we're fully mindful of the entanglements uh, because in that state of you know, accomplishment, then there will also be a, a state of something that um, is not so, was a bit disappointing. <laughs> um, uh, maybe such and such didn't turn, turn up to watch the event that you wanted and that was part of the full picture. So you'll, you'll recognize that in that it won't be absolutely complete. Um, there'll be a sense of uh, something missing uh, because that's the entanglements. That's the the opposing polarities are always present uh, in the in a given moment. We just either consciously aware of it or unconscious uh, of it. Um, so what I was uh, I lost my train of thought. Actually, this is interesting. I got on the tangent. Um, so that's right, the second law of thermodynamics. So uh, the second law of thermodynamics states that a ordered system over time will go to a disordered system unless work's put in. So it's the, uh, and we call that entropy, going in a state of order, to disorder. That's the second law of thermodynamics, unless work's put in to keep the order. So what happens with, uh, like in order to maintain a state of happiness, we need to put work in. And that's the transformative process of it, right? So if we're constantly putting work in to feeling fulfillment and to be content, and that work is that incremental progress towards um, a meaningful goal, for example, or a meaningful life. So whatever that is for you, it's just putting the work in to maintain that ordered state of contentment. Otherwise, what you will recognize is the gap, the missingness, and you, know, you won't be putting in uh, to maintain that order um, and it will become, your life will become more disordered. And so this, is, this happens with anything in life. Wherever we're not putting the work in, it becomes disordered. So for example, if you're focused on your work um, and then running around and not doing housework, then what will happen is the house becomes disordered. If you're constantly, um, you know, so busy um, and you're not putting time into managing your finances and budgeting and what will happen is your financial state will become disordered. So this second law of thermodynamics is always at play in all aspects of life. So wherever we're putting time, energy into, we can create order. And so it's absolutely possible is that you can create a fulfilling life, which you maintain a sense of contentment, satisfaction, and every day feels like a meaningful day, a purposeful day. But that requires putting work into what is most important to you. So it's, again, getting back to priorities, focusing on what's important. Otherwise, it won't feel you think you're moving in the right direction, but in essence, what you're doing is you're climbing the, the climbing the ladder and then you realize the ladder is against the wrong wall. Um, I, I've got that saying, I think that's out of a Stephen Covey book, um, is, you know, making sure that you are chasing the right goal, uh, because if that goal isn't aligned to your values, then you will ultimately may fill that gap or may get to the top, but still feel very dissatisfied. And it's because you were chasing it. And this gets back into not accepting social norms or not accepting, um, or not, uh, thinking that, 
uh, what your life should look like is like a celebrity's life or because what you only see is the highlights. You don't also, you don't see the completeness in what it's like to be a celebrity. You just look at one side of what it's like and that could be, you know, the financial, the not having the financial stress or having the power, you know, the power in terms of being able to hang out with highly influential people or whatever. So you, you're fixated on a particular form, but you're not looking at the completeness of what it's like to be a celebrity. And obviously, as a celebrity, they, there's no privacy um, uh, and they can be witch hunted and head hunted and, um, you know, attacked. And so you, you need to be aware of the completeness uh, because ultimately, if you do get to that status, you will uh, experience the completeness and you might not be, uh, you'll, you'll get um, shocked by the side that you're unconscious of. So, yeah, back to the second law of thermodynamics is that unless you're putting the work in, the incremental progress per day, you can't maintain a satisfied life. You won't. Uh, there'll be voids created through not putting the work in and maintaining an ordered state. And so what I'm constantly doing is working in the areas that are important to me and making progress. And so I'm uh, helping keep an ordered state, but I'm, uh, and I'm, things that aren't important to me, I'm happy to go to a disordered state. Or if I don't want them to go to a disordered state like the house, then you de delegate someone that really values, um, uh, and gets a lot of pride out of, or a lot of satisfaction out of cleaning, that fulfilling, helping someone else fulfill their goals. And that's how we can best help one another is delegating what we don't value to someone who values that. Uh, that way we have created a win-win situation. So, uh, yeah, so I think that's really important is that you're not working or trying to create order in an area that's not important. Because ultimately, you won't do it. Uh, you'll procrastinate. You'll procrastinate in this area. Uh, a void will be created. The disordered state will manifest. And you'll be unsatisfied. But if you're constantly uh, knowing or constantly checking in with what's important to you, and this will change as life changes, uh, it's a constant dynamic state. Uh, so our values change with this constant dynamic state that we live in. And I think that gets back to the point that I need to share is that, and maybe this is a title of a chapter, is that um, the only constant in life is change. Um, and I think that's really important to be aware of because therefore, uh, if we understand that um, change is what life is all about, then we, then we don't create this fantasy that uh, that happiness should be a fixed part of life uh it's not it's a dynamic state um it comes and goes and there's a reason it comes and goes uh the reason is is to create undrive uh to evolve uh to transform uh to um yeah so this whole thing is transforming is what gives you life it will give you meaning and purpose in the journey so it's really important to have um, metrics or things you can measure that you're actually making progress uh, in in the area you want to grow, and um, uh, you can aspire to have big, big audacious goals, but not be fixated that that what ultimately is going to. Uh, it's more important that that is it creates a gap enough, or you know some sort of gap that you want to fill that void. But the metrics are allowing you to focus on the increment progress. So you don't want the metric fixated on the gap uh, because that gap can become uh, disturbing and can create struggle and burnout. So we want to focus on the transformative state and what we can and focus on what we do today to progress towards that oxidated you're not there yet. Uh, that's that's life. But the journey of evolution. That's the journey of the human race is to evolve um, 
to, to take yourself to your next level um, and realize that life is just a journey of transformation. Uh, so, and it's just making sure that you're transforming in terms of constantly seeking that improvement in the area that you want to improve in. So for me, it's health. Uh, so what I'm doing every day is what can I do to better my health? And I'm constantly keeping up to date with the science to understand what I can do. And then I do it in my way. Uh, so obviously, I, I, you know, it, you can get all these recommended protocols, but everyone's so unique and special that that protocol won't be fit for you. And so, again, not getting fixated that, oh, I did this and the science says that I should get this. Well, no, because it's not the, the research wasn't done on you. Um, it was done on a, a broad population of different people and you're going to have a unique response um, because you are you. So it's by comparison. Uh, and I think the next chapter, or one of the chapters, should be on how comparison, uh, again, is taking us away from fulfillment. It's getting back to why we pair is that we want to fit in, ultimately, to connect. Um, but once that's, I guess, a very survival mentality, right? So we want to fit in, in order to survive. But once we, as, as we become more knowledgeable and we pick up survival skills and develop our survival skills, we, we can let go of me fit in and what we can do is focus on being the best version of us and i think what happens is that people uh well as a kid they need to fit in and conform in order to survive and but what happens is that we we think that is life and we don't actually grow up um and i think Part of this is how parents raise us and um, what other people are doing. And so we're constantly looking to fit in to survive, but ultimately we want to create self-empowerment so we're not dependent on other people for survival. And then we can contribute and give back to in order, in order to thrive ourselves, but in order to progress and to um, make a, you know, a, a difference in society um and i think this is where people get stuck is that what they grew up with and this is again this can get back to the school system too is that the school system is about comparison it's, you know um comparing grades and and then seeking perfectionism um and measuring your worth around marks. And again, that's creating attachments and thinking, well, you know, if I achieve a certain grade, then I'll, you know, I'll be something or someone. However, um, that form of attachment is creating this sense of misery when we're not getting it. And, and what can happen is that we are so fixated on the outcome that we're not present when we're doing the exam and we put pressure and due pressure on ourselves and we can't find the file. We can't open the file because we're stressed. And again, that's setting us up for ultimate thinking that, hey, if I get these marks, I'll be fulfilled. If I don't, um, then I'm not. Uh, but you can be if you've got uh, uh, what you want to focus on is your incremental progress. So did you do better than last time? Uh, are you progressing in the right direction? And then see it as just feedback. If you didn't get the marks of progress, then why didn't you? Um, what, what can you learn from this? And that's the incremental progress. That's the, the journey. That's the evolvement. That's the human evolution. However, if we... Uh, get fixated on the form and the marks, then we're just going to feel disappointed and we're not going to take the learnings. We're just going to, um, it, well, it, it can 
it can help people, uh, but it can also hinder hinder you. So some people can get so disappointed that it really fuels them uh, to, uh, you know, continue to pursue it, uh, pursue it. But I think what can be difficult about that is that they can continue to pursue it up too much pressure. And so we need a, a bit of pressure to perform, but we need to, uh, needs to be in a, an amount that we can feel like we're in a flow, um, that it's enough pressure to get us to focus. We don't want to put undue pressure on us. Uh, and that undue pressure can come from unrealistic expectations around that I should get a hundred percent and I should be right. And, um, the other thing about the school system is that it's all set up around right or wrongs. And so, um, that, and that creates this thing of the need to be right. Uh, the, the problem is that then doesn't, it creates sort of this, uh, disappointment all the time is because in, inadvertently at times you want to, you know, we're, we don't know everything and we've got to learn. And along that learning journey, um, we make mistakes. And so if we're fixated on being right, we're not going to try new things. We're not going to, and this is, this gets back to, again, in order to grow, you've got to step out of your comfort zone of what you know and try new things, which you inadvertently are going to make mistakes. And that's part of the journey is, uh, seeing the mistakes is progress um, because it's feedback as to not, how not to do things. For example, Thomas Edison uh, stated that uh, when a journalist commented that you've, um, you know, you've, 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 uh, you, uh, don't you consider yourself a failure? You've tried a thousand times and you, you haven't de developed the light bulb. And he said, I never saw it like that. He just saw each, each failure as feedback as to how not to develop a light bulb. And so, but he never, he never gave up in, in the pursuit of what he saw as something really meaningful, uh, and how he could contribute and give back to society. And so in that pursuit, he was focusing on everything's just feedback. I, you know, I'm either making progress towards what I'm, what my objective is, or I'm actually, um, just getting feedback that it's not progress in the right direction and all in the direction that's going to help me fulfill my objective. So this is really important in terms of getting back to that if we pride, you know, create pride around being right, then we're not going to try new things because trying new things, there's a risk of doing something so but what that does is hold you back and keeps you stagnant and, and when you're stagnant and not moving forward you actually can't stay stagnant you're actually either growing or you're declining because that's the second law of thermodynamics is that you're um you'll go to a state of disorder if you're not putting work in to create to maintain order and that's what the transformative is is constant work in to keep an ordered state, otherwise chaos prevails. And so, uh, this is the thing when you're not growing, you're declining and you feel stuck, you feel stuck or you feel that you're going in reverse. Um, and that's because at school, it's been all oriented around being right and to, uh, that this black and white, right or wrong, uh, in actual fact, it's neither. It's just feedback. Uh, so it's feedback that, yes, it's taking you, you in the direction you want to go in, or it's feedback to let you know that you're not heading in the right direction and that you need to change something. So it allows you to correct things. And it's like, you know, if if we saw life as a non-transformative process and a non-dynamic process, then when we would leave or to go to another port, we could just set the um, course and we would get to the side but need something to constantly correct. So this is a real nice, this is a nice analogy actually, is that, um, you know, the pilot or the, the captain of the ship is constantly altering 
um, the direction of the ship based on the ultimate direction, which is caused from the variables of life. Um, so, and that's the constant change. Uh, so the environment's constantly changing. The wind direction, the current direction, um, is all changes the, the flight path. And so the path, the, the path is like, if, if you saw it as right or wrong, then you would say that, um, that you're either on the wrong path or right path. Um, but in actual fact, it's just a, uh, or well, how do I better phrase this? Um, it's not really, no, you're not on the wrong path. You're what you're saying to yourself is that it's not the best path. <laughs> um, so there's a better path to take and we need to keep correcting our course of direction in order to take us towards that, that port along the way. We are going to offer uncertainty. We're going to encounter, um, challenge me about is is overcoming that challenge and getting back on course um making the feedback and the learning as to um how you could better or optimize that corrective action next time and so it's all the progress the progress is the most important thing uh and focus on the journey because ultimately the, the ship or the um plane may never get to the other port and if, if that's the case, then, then you, you could say that that was an extremely unsatisfactory life because you're fixated on a particular form of what a satisfactory life looked like. But if you're allowing, um, the transformative journey and focusing on the transformation, the growth and development, then you're, you're the whole journey's satisfying because each step you're learning something each step you're becoming a better person and it's the same as the ship or the boat each path is they've learned something about was was that a a good decision not so good decision what did i learn how could i better do it next time and if you're focused on that as the metric the improvements the incremental improvement then life is always satis satisfying uh and you'll feel a lot more content as opposed to having fixated on a particular form of contentment. And only that will make me contented. Whereas if you allow it to be a transformative state, then you can see contentment, fulfillment, satisfaction, happiness all the time. It's always there. Uh, so as I said, in terms of the quantum physics, we have this law of entanglement and the priorities are always there to keep a neutral state um it's just where the conscious of our own time then so we can create full consciousness and be mindful if we realize that it's always there we just need to look for it find it and we can just ask ourselves better questions in order to find what we're unconscious of so yeah with an up there's always a down <laughs> and so you know with it with Happiness is always sadness. Um, with gain, there's always loss uh, to maintain conservatism, neutralism. So uh, that's what I wanted to share in um, recording number two.